Imagine if your client can step inside their project before it's actually built. Now you may think this is something difficult to achieve, but it's actually easier than you think with V-Ray 7. So today I'm going to show you a step-by-step -step workflow on how you can take your storytelling to the next level using Chaos Virtual Tours. Now, if you own V-Ray 7, you now have access to Chaos Cloud. This is a platform where architects and designers can present their ideas more effectively and efficiently. And the new feature, of course, is Chaos Virtual Tour. A virtual tour is basically a 360 degree experience that allows the viewer to explore a 3D digital space. In most cases, that will be your project. Now, to create virtual tours, you need 360 panoramic renders. So these are not your typical still images. These are renders produced with 360 degree view of your scene. So it's like you're present in the location and you're able to stand and look around in all directions. So before we create the 360 degree renders, let's explore the ground floor of this residence. So the purpose here is to create a journey for someone walking into the space. Now, architecturally, you can see that there are stairs that lead to the second floor. You will also notice the floor and the wall finishes, the kitchen area in the back and a few space dividers. So you can tell this is a very open concept design. We are now looking straight into the living room area. So let's turn on the furniture layer, the lighting fixtures, as well as the decor. So we can see this space fully furnished. So I've set about six views to cover the living room, dining, kitchen, storage, and the washroom, as well as a couple of finishes and fixtures that I think are worth highlighting. Now, a few tips when you set the views, you want to make sure that the camera is well positioned in a way that it doesn't interfere with any architectural element. And you want to make sure that your lighting and materials are set to the best of your abilities. Now, if we go over to the rendering settings, you can see that my engine is set to CPU, with progressive disabled. I also have the quality set to high. As for the camera type, you wanna switch from standard to VR spherical panorama. And in the render output, we can see that we have a two to one aspect ratio, and I'm going to set the resolution to about 5.5K. So now that we are ready to render, remember that these are very high in resolution. So you can use some Chaos Cloud credits here to render these a little bit faster, as well as you can use an AI image enhancer to increase the resolution of the images. So this is what panoramic renders look like. They're not meant to look like your typical still images. And this is a reason why we need a platform to put everything together. So now that we're all set and ready, let's move over to Chaos Virtual Tour. So one advantage of V-Ray 7 is that you can create your virtual tours and upload your renders right from the frame buffer. And you can do this in a couple of ways. Once your render is finished, you can go to file and select upload image to Chaos Collaboration. Similarly, you can do a batch import if you've saved your render. So select all your renders, right click and select upload images to Chaos Collaboration or you can go right to the save button, just click and hold, and you'll find the same option here. So once you select this option, Chaos Collaboration window will pop up. And while we're at it, we can rename our image. And here is where you can create a new project. So let's call it VT Residence. And right after we can create a virtual tour. Let's just call it ground floor. It's very important to upload all of your renders through the V-Ray frame buffer because of a special feature in Chaos Cloud. So this is a very important step you have to keep in mind. So here we are inside our project in the browser. They are already renamed and I can arrange them in a specific order. And as you can tell, we don't have a floor plan yet, so we can upload one. And the very first step is to set the floor plan. So click on these three dots and select set as floor plan. This is a very good starting point to your tour and it will also serve as a mini map for your other views. Now, once we are on the floor plan, we can add hotspots for all of the other renders. So let's go to edit, 
add a hotspot and choose the closest location to the plan according to your view. So for our target, let's select entrance. For the title, you can repeat entrance as well. For the visibility of the title, you can choose whichever one is most appropriate if you want the title to be visible at all times or when you hover with the mouth. For the icon, I'm going to pick something a little bit more flat and I'm going to adjust the size. So that's how you add a hotspot for one of our views on a floor plan. So now we just have to repeat this workflow for all the other views. So once you are finished, you should have something like this, all the views linked by hotspots, and we are able to jump to any of the views from the plan. Now that is the first step. Now the second step is to link all the views together so we can easily move between hotspots. So this is our entrance view. We can rotate and see all the different angles. So the next step is to add a hotspot to all the renders so we can move from one space to the next. Now the typical workflow in most platforms is that you have to add the hotspots manually and this could take some time. So the advantage of uploading your renders through the frame buffer is that you can auto generate all of your hotspots in the correct location of your project. We can do this by going to edit hotspots and you'll notice that the auto generate option is enabled. For the options, select all panoramas, pick an icon and hit save. And as you can see, it auto generated over 50 hotspots between all my renders. So now we can freely move around and we can experience the entire ground floor moving from one space to the next. So now let's take a second to move around and make sure everything is working properly. Now just imagine setting up 50 hotspots. I've tried both workflows and this is a time saver. But there are some cases where you can manually add hotspots. And this is for those that love showing design options. For example, here I'm adding an extra view for the kitchen with a different floor finish. And here I'm adding an alternate view for the dining area just to show a different viewpoint. So the final step is to add highlights and highlights let you add context and design options to your virtual tour. You can use highlights to describe finishes, materials, specifications, fixtures, and external links to better explain your design. So for example, in the entrance, I can add a highlight for this floor lamp. If we go to edit, select highlight, we can pin it to the floor lamp. And now I can add more information about this product. So things like the name, description, and images. Like a hotspot, you can select between different icons, different colors, and the size. Very simple process. I went on ahead and added highlights for the floor finishes, the coffee table, the pendant light in the dining. But you get the idea. This could be anything that can help you better present your design. Now to share your presentation, simply click on these three dots and select share. Here you can enter an email address to send an invitation. You can also give access to the virtual tour by sharing the link. And it's always great to unlock comments so everyone can make design contributions. Obviously, still renders is a great way to communicate your ideas, but I highly recommend creating virtual tours for your clients. You are simply taking all the project information you already have and creating a more immersive presentation for your design. And you can easily get this done if you have Uray 7. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and hit that bell notification. This is the easiest way to support the growth of the channel and to watch other content, make sure to click the videos on the screen. But as always, I'll see you guys next time.